This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Bro, gnarly. What's up, Taylor? Dude, that nerd in his electric hybrid totally blew the light while texting his yuppie friends. That's so bogus, bro. Are you hurt? Yeah, like I can't move my hips, bro. I think I broke my pelvis, man. Dude, no way. Way. Taylor, you need to drop a dime and talk with the lawyers at the Advocates Law Firm. No way. Can't afford that, bro. Your crotch is broken, man, and they don't earn any money unless they win your case. Dude, no way. You get injured, the advocates get results. Contact me today at advocateslaw.com. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land, the podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Coming up, the return of Who Sucks Less. First time for a few emails from the Men's Room at KISW.com. You've got me. Had a couple from our question, when were you in the right or wrong place at the right or wrong time? Uh, guys, my best friend and I got to meet and party with ACDC while high on acid <laughs> for a gram of weed in 1996 on their Who Made Who tour because a hard-up roadie wanted to get stoned. One of the best times of my life. That from Wendy in Everett. Wendy, if you were that high on acid, might not have been ACDC. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Guys, I was at the right place at the right time when I saw a three-year-old kid running on a boat dock. He slipped and fell into the lake, and he obviously started struggling. Then I saw him starting to go under, so I sprinted over to him and pulled him out of the water and saved him from drowning. That from the Woodward Trucker. I had a similar experience when I was a lifeguard uh, at the Boy Scout camp. When I saw a kid having a tough time, I, I threw him my, uh, my pole and yeah. grabbed onto it, and I yanked him out. What are you going to do? What mm-hmm. if you couldn't grab your pole? What, yeah. what if he's going under and he could? Would you have actually jumped in? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it'll be good. I don't like getting wet. I, but, yeah. You know. yeah. 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 Had the ring. You can just take your pole and like push him to the corner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is that <laughs> protocol? Or are you supposed to jump in? It depends on the situation. If, 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 that means if, you're if supposed it, to jump in. If it really looks like he's struggling, then you jump in, obviously. But uh, at that point, I was like, "Hey, man, just grab onto the pole. <laughs> Come on, grab the pole, kid." I said, "Grab the pole." You're tapping him on the head with it. Grab the pole. He's supposed to put it on your shoulder. Grab the pole, damn it. Afternoon, Jed, during a trip to Vegas a few years ago, I'd gone to the bathroom to uh, let out some alcohol. As I exited through the door, I looked down and saw what appeared to be a $100 bill folded in half. I figured it was one of those advertising gimmicks to look like a hundy. Put it in my pocket, went about my video gambling. I switched to a machine on the opposite side of where I was sitting, and there on the ground was another folded up $100 bill. I put it in my pocket as well. Later that night, I checked those hundreds in my pocket. Holy yes, they were in fact two legitimate $100 bills. One $200 being in the right place at the right time. That from the Elk Plain Drifter. Yeah, we had someone else who uh, texted in, said they're at the Bellagio Hotel, heard something bounce on the floor. They looked down, $500 poker chip. Get out of here. Mm-hmm. Gentlemen, my daughter uh, Emerson was born today at 427 a.m., 6 pounds, 12 ounces. So it is literally her birthday. Could you guys give her a little kid face sandwich and Mickey and Goofy telling her all about Disneyland so she knows what to look forward to when she's a bit older? Uh, thanks, guys. Love the show. That from Ashlyn and Gavin. Fish challenge. Well, gals, congratulations on joining planet Earth. One day you're going to come on down to Disney World, and the first question I'm going to ask you, Emerson, is, is your last name Biggins? <laughs> well said, Mick. <laughs> the baby's 12 years old. 12 hours. 12, 12 hours. hours. Yeah. <laughs> that joke is. That joke was funny if she could understand it. Yeah, yeah. But just say it like, all right, yeah. Get ready for stuff that you have no idea what's going on. Here, here's some advice for Mick. Try to open your eyes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Parents would say, please close them. <laughs> Guys, our birthday shout out make twenty two years better than ever. There, Auntie Essie, love Uncle Stan and Mom. How about some dirty Germans, please? Yeah, I'm not even sure I understood entirely what that email was. So I'll just say something you loud and clear. Pull off your pants, spread your legs, and get ready for some good times. Yeah, see? I see it now, huh? It's a 22-year-old. Yeah. That seemed to be a good birthday. Yeah. Last time I ever met somebody who was 22, so they had a lot to say, and I didn't listen. <laughs> 
Oh, the show today is my sister Stephanie's birthday. Can you please help her celebrate her birthday by having, let's see, uh, Dam from Kevin Hart and Captain Crunch talking about what happens when you do too many tequila shots and a word of inspiration from Miles. I'll thank you guys. That from Dean. Damn. <laughs> Well, it's hard to know exactly what happens when you do too many tequila shots, but last time there was a lot of tiger fur in my mouth. Crunch bear. Jesus. Tiger fur. All right. <clears throat> Does not say how old Steph is. Okay, Steph? Remember these words of advice from Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> Everyone has good taste. They just come in different flavors. The inspiring words of Jeffrey Dunn. Hmm. Hola, bitches. Jake here. Today is my 34th birthday. Can I get the cocaine cats telling me what to do with this new jar of peanut butter? Uh, thanks, guys, and have a great show. Oh, you know to do with that jar of peanut butter, playboy. You put it on the one chat part of my body. <laughs> <laughs> bitches, it's my wife Rachel's birthday today. I'm so high right now. I'm going to come over there and eat all that peanut butter. You're getting all four paws tonight, player. You ready for a little cat jelly? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. You're going to make that kitty purr. <laughs> Guys, uh, it's my wife Rachel's birthday today. Can I get uh, Coach Ted to pepper up on her uh, horrible music choices? Can't wait to see Thrill and Ted at the H next time. That from Andrew. It's all right. Andrew, you got my mind racing. Not sure what the H is. Also, Andrew, I'll be honest, I like pop music. So more than likely... If you think she has terrible music choices, Coach likes them. You know, sometimes in the locker room, we put on crazy stuff just to get everybody fired up. Who knows what kind of day it's going to be? Tell you one thing, though. We live by four rules in this locker room. Block, tackle, win, and we like boy bands. Guys, birthday shout out to my buddy Rick. He's 43. Today works hard for his family and is a good person to everyone that he knows. Going to get some turtle wax with Wendy Williams in the first one, followed by the Kevin Hart Dam in the paws. Uh, by the way, you owe me a bottle of Jameson. That from Jimmy. Oops, hang on. Jimmy! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> guys, can you guys uh, please wish Mr. B.J. Bo Jones a happy birthday today? Let's see here. He would love a big old Leroy Jenkins in his life. And the Dirty Germans talking about handcuffs and dog leashes. From his best buddies, Brendan and Christopher. Let's do this. Leroy Jenkins! Yeah, we have all of those in spades where we are from. We'll be using some tonight. And since you like things associated with dog, you can guess what type of style we'll be getting after. Yeah, well, you know, the dogs, they have inspired the Germans for years. Mainly when we launched the football. That's the kind you play with your hands. You can play with this with your hands. I'm talking to you about the football. But yes, yeah, the dogs, they show us how we both watch the games. Yeah, you can also play with Hans. He'll be joining us. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes me and Thrill like to act like we're keepers. Just so we can <laughs> wear those oversized gloves. <laughs> Do you ever have a man rub you down in goalie kid gloves? Yeah, it's exhilarating. Happens to Miles once. He missed two days of work. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we do it with Hulk hands. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, put on, put on that little mesh jersey when you're on the side. I got Cleveland to do it. Oh, Bitches, today is my 54th birthday. My What's that? It's an aggressive. Damn. <laughs> Bitches, today is my 54th hey. birthday. He's a good looking man. My little brother works for Pokemon for my birthday wish. I would love to have the dirty Germans talk about the dirty sexual underworld. A Pokemon. Uh, goes through. Thank you, and rock on. That from Matt. Yeah, all you need to know is that Pokemon is short for pocket monster, which to me means penis. Pokemon means penis. Yeah, to me, most of my favorite poke poke Pokemons also ones that can be in the water. Yeah. Because everything goes well. Me and the Pokemon should be covered in dampness. <laughs> Guys, today is my 58th orbit around the sun, and like last year, don't know if anyone cares. So, can I get a happy Chinooka and a couple of thrills? Gets. Thanks, guys, and rock on. That happy from Chinooka. Juan. Get. 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 Happy Chinooka. Get. Box is back in action. Get. And all the dinosaurs say my grandma Betty is turning 91 years old. Can the 1920s men's room please help her celebrate like she did in the past? That from James. Ah, what do you know? That dame's finally turning now. Betty, we call her sweaty Betty. She's good in the Betty and gets me wetty. 
Sure is swell she is. What a hell of a dame. I would love to hand and shag dance with her. Yeah, she. It's a problem with Sabetti is a girl like that get you in trouble. Next thing you know, the cop is all around. Miles been too much, too much, too much of this hand dancing. <laughs> All right, guys, here you go. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you. Yaz, a dirty Germans, brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's world famous sausage, mensroomlive.com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, Schweinefly. Now, the Men's Room wants to know who sucks last. Time for Who Sucks Last Team of Thrill Hill. You bring us three stories from the news each and every week. They all suck. It is up to us to determine out of the three stories which one sucks the least. Now, if you follow KISW on Twitter, the debate is already underway on Who Sucks Less. Yeah, oddly enough, all these stories have uh, kind of one common thread. Like what I did there, Mike, one common thread. G903 of them, two take place at separate Indian restaurants. The other one takes place on Subway. But not a subway restaurant, the actual train that runs underground. All right. So let's start over in the United Kingdom where two customers, they ordered almost $90 worth of food, despite the staff warning them that it would be too much for two people to consume. Well, things went further south when the check arrived and the customers complained there was someone else's hair in their food. A subsequent investigation by staff revealed that there was indeed hair on their kebabs (laughs) and on their naan bread. But suspecting that something was awry... The manager checked the security cam, which shows the customers twice, reaching into and ripping out fistfuls of an unseen material from his shorts. He then proceeds to dump it over the dishes while his friend guffaws at his antics. At that point, the manager claims he confronted the culprit about his grotesque garnish, which sparked a 10-minute argument during which the customers swore at the staff. Well, the spat concluded with the patrons chucking $26 at him and leaving. Suffice it to say, the employees there were shocked and disgusted by the dirty deed. The manager has since reported the incident to police who claim it's a civil matter. Fortunately, the public has, in fact, implored that business to identify the man in order to prevent the crime from happening again. Yes, he reached into his shorts, pulled out a tuft of pubic hair, threw it on his own food. Oh, no. And then claimed that there was hair on his food. Oh, no. But it was his. Oh, It was his. Yes, and it's all on camera. And now we go to another Indian restaurant, but this time in Cleveland, where a man was caught when he put his own pubic hair into his curry just to get a free meal. The tight-fisted Lee Tires. He got his comeuppance when he was jailed for refusing to pay his bill of just $53. But he, too, was caught on closed-circuit TV with his hands down his pants just before the hair was found. A judge heard that he pulled it out towards the end of his meal at the Indian restaurant. Now, the 40-year-old claimed that he had found it in what was left of his lamb, something I can't pronounce, but he tried to use it as an excuse for not paying. But the angry restaurant owner told the court that this particular guy was constantly trying to avoid paying for meals. In fact, already owed him $150 from previous visits. And he was warned that he'd only be served if he was paid. But he said, look, I have cash. He managed to order uh, two more lamb products, some rice, some naan, a couple of drinks, something else for him and a friend. Now, the pair ate their meal before tires called over a waiter to complain about the hair in his food. And after some discussion, the pair refused to pay, and they left the restaurant. Well, the owner told the court, quote, I told him and all the staff, we all have black hair. That's brown. That is not our hair. Well, naturally, the defendant denied the incident with the hair. He claimed his friend was going to pay the bill, but that the restaurant manager demanded what he owed from the previous visits, and that's why he's left. But again, they took a look at the security footage, and sure enough, he's reaching his hand into his pants, ripped out a tuft of pubic hair, and sprinkled it on his food. Jesus. Hold on. Let me postpone the restart of my computer, you son of a bitch. All right. Yo. Now we go to China, where a man, <laughs> a man yanks out his pubic hair on a subway and sprinkles them on a woman's head. Oh, no. The scene unfolded. <laughs> I'm bored of a subway. I'm bored of a subway train. Somewhere in the country as a fellow passenger watched on and recorded this on a cell phone. Now, the traveler is seen clutching a can of soda before he begins rummaging around inside of his pants. He then looks around to check whether he's being watched. He seemingly plucks out one of his pubic hairs, and staring intently at the plucked strand, the man then raises his hand 
and tosses it on top of the head of a sleeping woman. Seemingly proud of his achievement, the man that can't help but reach for another tuft of pubic hair and sprinkle it again over the woman. He passes off the creepy act as if he was just combing through his hair. So again, these are your three stories. I'm sorry that all three of these stories exist, but you had the guy in the UK, <sighs> or two guys in the UK, one of them reaches into his shorts, rips out a handful of pubic hair, throws it on his food, says, hey, we're not paying for this or hair. But he's caught on camera doing it. Then we go to Cleveland, where the exact same thing happens. An old guy who constantly doesn't pay his bill, reaches in his pants, rips out pubic hair, throws it in his curry, says, I'm not paying for this or hair in it. And then finally, the guy in China reaches into his pants, rips out a tough pu- uh, pubic hair, and sprinkles it on top of the head of a sleeping woman next to him. I think I'm going to go this way, Ted. I think the man in China who yanked out his pubic hair and placed him on a woman's head, he sucks the most. Okay? Mm. Okay. I will say the person who sucks the least is the man in Cleveland who was caught putting his own pubic hair on his food to get out of paying his $53 tab, having done this at the restaurant before. He now, is, uh, now owes $150 to the restaurant. I think he sucks the least because the restaurant already knew what they were getting into with this guy. All right. Well, this is the first so, time he did the pubic hair. Trip. Yeah, but he had tried on numerous occasions to sure, get out of sure. paying for his bill. So they already knew this guy was always up to something. Where the people who ordered the $90 worth of food, which is too much, all right, well, th- that was a first time customer. So still trying to identify that customer so that he won't do it again uh, someplace else, whoever he and his date were. But either way, that was a new customer, so they don't know. The guy in Cleveland, they knew exactly who this guy was and the fact sure. that whatever his strategy was, he was always going to try to come up with a way to get out of his tab. So I think he sucks the least because the owner of the restaurant should have said, look, you already owe me 150 bucks. Mm-hmm. You pay the $150. I have no problem serving you food right now. So I think that's the only way I can do the quick math. All right. Complete opposite over here. Okay. Number one. I don't know what you guys are doing in Indian restaurants. Just enjoy the food. If you're not sure what you want, get tandoori chicken. You'll like it. Right? Or some naan bread. Yeah. Uh, So I think the guy... I think the guy with the $90 tab probably sucks the most. Because they were already like, hey, you can't... Like, you're not going to be able to eat all that. Whatever. So here's my whole thing. I don't know who sucks the most, but I think the food people are worse. Because they're affecting somebody's business, they're affecting the waiter, and the owner of the restaurant. Okay. Now, the guy in China (laughs) is gross. And it's disgusting. Yeah. Also, funnier. But, I will say this too. He puts a pubic hair on one lady's head. But it's just her. Whereas the other two are affecting everybody that works at these restaurants. You know what I mean? Like, that's a okay. bigger total. Whereas his is bad. It's all weird <laughs> pubic hair assault. But I'll take the guy in China. In theory. That sucks the least. The the sleeping woman on the subway. She doesn't even know what happened. How, unless, correct? How did they catch him? They didn't catch him. The A passenger across from her recorded on cell phone and then uploaded this. I see. Right. So you can watch him do it should you want to see that type of thing. So that woman doesn't know, but... I can't imagine how devastated it should be if she's online like, boy, that looks like me. And it looks like that man just put his pubic hair on top of my head. Well, also, too, I feel like I could just walk over and either quickly brush it off or blow it off her head. Like, like, oh, she's asleep. She doesn't even know. I like someone here says, Thrill, have you been sitting on two pube stories just waiting for that third? <laughs> no. Honest to God. Honest to God. This is what I'm going through. My, sometimes you look for stories, but right now, people doing bad things is just so bad. I don't feel like going down that road. So I'm thinking, all right, what's something stupid? I honestly typed, man grabs pubic hair. I put that into the search bar, and sadly, all three of these stories popped up. Trust me, there were more. I just went with these three. Also, can we start trimming up? (laughs) Are you just reaching in and ripping out (laughs) chunks of hair? No. I have hair all over my body, except my head and down there. (laughs) Debate continues on Who that. Sucks That's Less if you follow KISW on Twitter. You are listening to The Men's Room. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Bro, gnarly. What's up, Taylor? Dude, that nerd in his electric hybrid totally blew the light while texting his yuppie friends. That's so bogus, bro. 
Are you hurt? Yeah, like I can't move my hips, bro. I think I broke my pelvis, man. Dude, no way! Way! Taylor, you need to drop a dime and talk with the lawyers at the Advocates Law Firm. No way, I can't afford that, bro. Your crotch is broken, man, and they don't earn any money unless they win your case. Dude, no way. You get injured, the Advocates get results. Contact me today at AdvocatesLaw.com. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. Start summer up by mixing things up with top paint and stain brands at Lowe's. Shop HGTV Home by Sherwin-Williams, Valspar, Cabot to find the perfect pop of color or classic shade you've been looking for. And don't forget to prep your deck for the season with reliable wood stain and sealer. Now's the perfect time to complete your paint or stain project. Lowe's. All things summer, all at the right price. Yay! You're in the men's room. Coming up in just minutes, we will drink, we will toast with a shot of the day. And we do have your headlines on the way one hour from now. First quick take on Mike Hawk and some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. All right, a new survey is out. The percentage of U.S. adults that have tried marijuana is up to 49%, an all-time high. Ha! <laughs> Hey, oh, it's hard. No, no, yeah. Pleasant. <laughs> right. I, yeah I, I should say that well, is 49 you know, percent of people that admit it. Yeah. it, it it's curious. Uh, you know, obviously, I think young people would be, you know, a lot more inclined to try it when they're partying with their friends and everything sure. else. But it seems like in the states of legalized weed, there's a lot more interest from the senior community on trying it for pain, for Absolutely. trying edibles. You know, like that wouldn't be my first expectation when they started legalizing marijuana. Those are the kind of questions that, you know, you would get. And they were typically from like people my dad's age who just wondered, what, OK, what kind of products do they have? Are they, you know, like, I know what ash is. I know what weed is. I know what bud is. You know, But now that. that you say it's legal and it's not nearly as dangerous as well, all the BS you were right. selling us before. OK, I'm willing to look but into it. more into like, you know, topical creams and, and, and oils and, and, and different things, you know, and, or, or just THC pills, tincture, you know, all the, you know, like just curious right. about what is it can i put this in my drink can i put this in my water my, will my, it help relieve pain will it help relieve my joint pain my grandmother just turned 95 years old last weekend i sent her some of this stuff called oh god i don't know it's a topical cream right mm-hmm. she has very bad arthritis sure she was very hesitant to try it uh my mom said she tried it and three hours later she was knitting again Oh my so goodness. this is something that she could only yeah. do for like 60 seconds at a time before she had to take a break. Sure. But she was just, you know, I mean, potholders coming quick now, man. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, my, my grandmother, same thing. She's been using it. She has a topical cream or a lotion or something like that. She'll put it on her arm. She'll put it on her back. She'll put it where she's sore. And absolutely, it's a miracle you're mm-hmm. for her. Yep. So... 100%. And, the, and again, of the 49% of people that admit it, I think there's a lot of states out there that have... Still got pretty harsh rule on there, so people are kind of afraid to admit that they've tried it. Sure. But, yeah, we'll see how that goes. A new study found that Americans are spending $765 uh, more dollars a month than they did a year ago. Well, yeah. Did you fill up your car lately? Oh, I'm into that, man. You can physically be out and do stuff. Right. You can go outside and do stuff. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, that's That's a big difference. Exactly. (laughs) I mean... <laughs> Shops are opening up. Right. Restaurants are I mean, opening up. You go to up. a restaurant, like it just costs more than ordering food because you or order cooking. food, right? Like you order food to your place, which we all did, which is fine. But like when you go out, like there might be beverages. Exactly. You might get dessert. Right. They don't Appetizers. deliver the beer to your house. Of all the food I've ordered to my home, it's rare that I order a dessert. And yeah. if I and if I do, <laughs> what is it? Miles, you remember Choco Taco? No, it's probably a chocolate molten cake from Domino's. Oh, Damn, oh those right, are man. solid. Those are great. <laughs> they, they are so good. They but look like, like little order, hockey pucks, but done, right, done, right, they're but good. If I order like a burger and fries from a place or whatever, like I, don't, I never think to like, oh, get the look at the dessert, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Just the problem at Domino's wet app, man. Just be checking out. Like, you sure you don't want these? I know. No, right? I'm not. I'll take them. You sons of bitches, leave what, me alone. What about the cheesy bread? <laughs> you sons of bitches. <laughs> Let me, wings. Let me go. <laughs> Let me go. Can I have my family back now? <laughs> Can I just check out? <laughs> yes, I want a Sprite. It's been discovered that it takes 40 times more water to put out a burning Tesla than other cars. Because of the batteries? Gotta be. Yep. All right. 
He just built them so doggone well that they just keep fueling the fire. Just in case your car catches on fire. That's not that, something that was ever a selling point to me. Like, <laughs> no, but not, hey. With a Subaru, you know what? If he catches on fire, you can put this bad boy out under 60 seconds. <laughs> exactly. Oh, wow. Feels so much better now. Hey, it happens to a lot more people than you think, brother. I know. Sure. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sad news, guys. The creator of uh, Sudoku passed away here recently. I that, saw that. that. There's no punchline to that one. That's legit. Guy did pass Which away. one's Sudoku? That's the one that's the 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 nine by nine grid, and you got to fill in the numbers on it. So it's it's got <laughs> <laughs> it's face like what? I know. So it's, it's right. You can tell by the look in my eye. I have no idea. It's the square, and then it's got nine smaller squares in it. And the way that you play it is that each line on the on the deal has to have one through nine on it, and then each sideways line on it has to have one through nine, and then each individual box inside that box has to have one through nine. <laughs> and then you got to figure out how to solve that puzzle. Ted's expression does not change. Your entire it's a explanation. lot of fun, Ted. I honestly have a sounds like it. I have a book that I have that I've been filling out on that one. It it's is, right by the crossword that you play. All I was, the time. I was gonna is. say, like, what do you want to do? Have, play Scrabble next? That's pretty much what it is. It's, it's just a crossword number puzzle. Scrabble. That's great. You'd enjoy, it, Ted. It's fun. Maybe. I don't think he cares that the guy passed away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I really don't. No, it's a big game. I hear people all the time be like, yeah, I did a Sudoku. Sudoku. It's right. one of those where it's so much harder to explain than it is to actually do. All right. So. I mean, are you mad if the guy who does a New York Times crossword puzzle passes away? Exactly. Because it's so hard. You're like, see? About oh, time man. it's your turn. <laughs> you know what I mean? You frustrated me for years. Bastard. Now you're dead. There's- <laughs> it's like Pete, ah. Pete died. He was a guy who designed golf courses. Freaking impossible. He died and I cheered. I was like, he'll never build another golf course again. This is awesome. It's going to be somebody else. There's a dating app called Plenty of Fish that has launched a new Plenty of Pets campaign that's designed to bring people together with a common love of pets. Oh, yeah. If you have a pet, who doesn't love pets? It's like children. You like your own. Yeah. It's not that you can't yeah. find a dog that won't like you or be nice to you or whatever, but if you ever come into the relationship with someone who already has an animal, oh yeah, you're sick. You learn what a step parent is, basically. I mean, just you know, the, the kid doesn't talk back. And it's not that you can't learn to love that pet, but I'm sorry when you first introduced me to that pet, I am not the biggest fan. No, I mean, I mean, it depends. Fine. Fine. It depends on the it depends on the animal, but most of the time that that animal is already attached to their owner. Exactly. So you're gonna have a tough, and, and they're jealous of you. Right. One way or another. So they're going to have a hard time breaking into that, you know? Exactly. 100%. Do or you start walking it all the time, and all of a sudden you and that dog are buddies. Yeah, no. Never <laughs> happened to me. Like I said, that's <laughs> really? what happened. No, man. hell no. Those are never my dogs. I mean, I did. Oh, I see. Yep, yep. Yeah, I got you. you I'm sorry. Nah. Yeah, those dogs are weird, man. Yeah. yeah. Not, yeah. Those dogs are real weird. Not going to be. Not, not gonna lie. I was not a fan of the Brillo pad when he first came into my life. <laughs> guy was a pain in the ass. Yeah, but think of all the money you saved on dishes. I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, the little Papillon I used to hang out, he was the same way. Like, right. I mean, it took weeks for just Jack to get him to dog. stop barking, right? Right. But then after a while, like, I walked to him. I took him everywhere with me. Mm-hmm. I put a little... Maryland shirt on him. <laughs> you put a shirt on the dog. I did. Look, it, it waits. But it's pounds. not yours. It's fine. <laughs> and I and I know. I I was one of those people. Don't you don't have to dress your dogs. Once I was hanging out like a year with a small dog. But yeah, I, bu- I got it some Maryland gear. <laughs> Bought him a shirt. Yeah, it was fun. She'd come home like, look, I got on his black sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> and you just been sitting here smoking weed, putting sweatshirts on the dog, haven't you? Yes. And taking pictures. <laughs> Lady Cabo, I'd be watching sports. For little Pat and I, as my dad would say, had to come to Jesus, and then all of a sudden he liked me. Oh, so, nice. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> he barked at me when I was going to the bathroom. Every time I'd leave to go to the bathroom, he'd follow and run after me, start yelling at me as I was going to the bathroom like he didn't know what I was about to do in there. That's what he's doing. He knows exactly what you're doing. <laughs> can you hear me? Can you hear me? Is it disturbing you? <laughs> oh, number two, you've been in that wild dog. Disturbed some other things, too. General Mills is releasing a <laughs> monster mash. Are you masturbating, Mike? <laughs> uh, General Mills is releasing a monster mash cereal in celebration of the 50th anniversary of their monster cereals. Do people even know the monster mash song? I mean, yeah. is it still top of mind? It's for played every year, once man. A once year, a year. It comes yeah, out. Okay, right. I know, but the kids know it. Sure. Because yeah, there's right. not a lot of Halloween songs. No, no. Right? Right. So it's, it's Monster Mash all the freaking, yeah. all the time. Well, and like, I feel like every generation TV show, right, has a Hollywood episode. Sure. Somebody shows up at the Halloween party, that song's always on. That, it right. is always that is on. That's the song there. that's played. Right. Yeah. If, it's, if it's on Disney Channel and a Halloween party, the Monster Mash is being played. And who is the guy who voiced that? As far as the talking, I mean, they named that match, that singers, but like, they did the Monster right. Mash. Is that right. Boris Karloff? Is that like, or was the guy that did Jr.? the Grinch? No, that was way too low. 
Is it too low? Yeah. So I'll say the guy the, the did Grinch, the Grinch. We don't know. Also did Tony the Tiger at the time. I right. Believe. Can't remember his name. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not working on it. I'll figure it out. Uh, hotels are starting to add fees to use the pool and the gym. I saw this. Now, here's what they said. That pisses me off. They said, like, well, it'd be like 20 bucks to use the pool, 20 bucks for an early check, and blah, blah, blah. But they said, hey, but if we do this, we can lower our room rates. Like, but it's You're not the going same to. difference. Yeah. You right. could. It makes no sense. That, see, it's like Spirit like, Airline, right? They, we don't charge you a lot for the seat, but assuming you're traveling, say, with clothes on, by the time it's done, it costs as much as just buying a ticket on an airline that doesn't have bats flying in the right. cabin. What about the complimentary breakfast? I mean, I'm going to town on that damn thing. Still complimentary. I got a bowl of raisin bran. Oh, wait, 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 I got wait, a wait. bagel. I got eggs. You can have I the breakfast. Juice, I got coffee. But if you sausages. want, if you want to use a bowl or a plate, we'll charge you for that. Like you know, the breakfast, sure, sure. Oh, you wanted silverware with that? Yeah. The lady's gearing up to go on down to Vegas, and they charge forty dollars a day for a resort fee. You can't opt out of it. But that's how you get into the pool. That's how you get into the gym. That's how you. There, there's one other thing that that they give you the, the Wi-Fi. That's what it is. And it's like forty dollars a day for this resort fee. You can't say. Nah, I'm good. You still gotta pay the dog on resort fee. So what? Start charging people to go use the pool or the gym, and then right, what happens a year from now? Hotels can explain why people don't stay anymore. Right? Because right? you're pricing people out. Exactly. Meanwhile, Airbnb is like, do that. Right. Oh, yeah, we, right that ahead. is a fantastic sure. idea. I'll Nobody... blow the kitty pool in the back. And we'll just have <laughs> a party. God, damn right. Here's a slip and slide and a garden hose, mother effort. <laughs> Nobody will work here. We're still paying them four dollars an hour. Right. 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 Goodness gracious. Answer your own question. All right. <laughs> Our friends over at BuzzFeed compiled a list of celebrities who dropped out of college. Who do you guys know that uh, uh, big time celebrities that might have dropped out of college? I, I know mean, normally it's like the the standard Bill Gates, right? I mean, I don't know if that's a Bill celebrity. Gates, and I, and I think uh, Steve Jobs also dropped out of yeah. college. I feel like our guy. Uh, uh, <laughs> Bezos. Captain, Captain Penis Rocket. Yeah, Jeff Bezos. All Captain time. Penis Rocket. I yes. feel like he dropped out of college as well. But no, none of the none of the big time billionaires are on this. These are actual celebrities. These are actors. These are these okay. are all right. So uh at number ten, Eddie Murphy. Says he dropped out of New York's Nassau Community College, but soon after landed a spot on Saturday Night Live. I was gonna say he was like eighteen when he started. Yeah. So I mean if you're gonna get that gig, I, I that's think why I would drop think you take that gig. You're gonna hook up with Saturday yeah, Night Live. Yeah, you take that gig. Yeah, man. Number nine, Ryan Seacrest. Really? Dropped out of University of Georgia to move to California. Okay. Well, he's a radio yeah. guy. You know, he's been doing it his whole life. He found his career when he was in college and stuck with it. There you go. Go where they make money. Go do it. Number eight, Zoe Dejanel. Left Northwestern University to pursue acting. Well, it worked out for her. I mean, right. that's, a, that's a great school academic-wise. So, I mean, you know she's smart. Right. You can't just get into Northwestern. See, what I'm more interested in is what happened in these people's lives that made them... Uh, did you land a role? Right. It just clicked like, okay, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I have the knack for it. I'm going to go and do it. You know, there's a lot of people that believe that they're going to go and do something. They'll follow your dreams and all that. Sure. These uh, people, I I would assume, had to take some sort of an objective look at, am I actually that good? Can I actually get this thing done? All right, let's 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 talk about it. What counts as a college dropout? Like, I always say I didn't go to college. But I guess technically I dropped out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you got to re- so add it to your resume. There you no, go. That, 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 there, there's a ton of people out there. As long as you're persistent on something, like Morgan Freeman was a theater actor when he was 25 years old. He did not get his first role, major role, until he was 50, and that was on the Electric Company. No All right? kidding. A, a children's show. Right. So I mean, he just kept grinding and grinding sure. and grinding. But you don't realize that Morgan Freeman. That's why when you look back at some of the older movies where he could be in those movies, there's no Morgan Freeman. Exactly. Because he didn't really get a break until he's mm-hmm. fifty. So I mean, if you just keep trying, yep, a good chance. Celebrities who dropped out of college. Number seven, John Mayer. Then he went to uh, Berkeley College of Music, but left to move to Atlanta with Zach Brown Band member Clay Cook. Hmm. All right, and that makes sense. Yeah, I told you, my buddy, he saw him. They played his uh, fraternity party. In Virginia no years kidding. ago. Yeah. It's kind of like Dave Matthews. Like, yeah, he played the Sigma how, Chi party in West Virginia when I was there. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but like, because he's known for like chicks liking him, but that's sure. how he kind of came up was playing God. fraternities. And College sort of, tours. Yeah. Chicks <laughs> liking him. Yeah. You know what everybody said every time they went to Dave Matthews? Every single time. I'm going to go see Widespread next week. <laughs> <laughs> widespread. Just follow him for a year, bro. I can't talk about Dave without Widespread. can't talk about Rusted Rue without Satan Widespread. <laughs> Number six, Ashton Kutcher says he studied biochemical engineering at the University of Iowa, but dropped out to pursue modeling and acting. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, it worked out. It's a good-looking man. Yeah, man. And smart. Biochemical engineering. That means he's smart. means he was studying. It means know. he was studying a smart topic. It's easier to smile. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, Ellen DeGeneres. 
says that she left the University of New Orleans uh, early for odd jobs before starting her stand-up career. Hmm. That's dedication to your craft, then. If you drop out to take odd jobs so that you can pursue the thing. Which I feel like that's kind of par for the course for comedians. That's a that's a rough, rough yeah, road to take all absolutely. the way out, man. Uh, number four, Ben Stiller. He studied film at UCLA but left to go back to New York to act. Well, his dad was already a famous right. actor. He, I mean, yeah, I, 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 don't, I, don't care, I don't care what he does. He, yeah. he Not that he hasn't earned his keep. He just he had a ticket. Absolutely. So Absolutely. He had a, he had a couch. He already had out. an in. Right. Number three, Brad Pitt. Went to the uni- uh, University of Missouri to become a journalist but left early to uh, go to California. I knew he was a tiger. Yeah, man. <laughs> See it all over him. Yeah, man. Number two, Tom Hanks left the Sacramento State University to intern at the Great Lakes Theater Festival in Cleveland. Ooh, I wish it had worked out wow. for him. I bet so you he, he regrets left, that. He left California to go to Cleveland. That's that, exactly what I'm thinking. That is, that is that, devotion that to is. your craft. What that's, actor that's do you hear on. about that leaves California, California and goes to Cleveland? I'm going to make my, you know, my name big in Cleveland. I'm going to go to Cleveland. And this is the number one celebrity who dropped out of college... She is the number one celebrity on all fronts, Oprah Winfrey. She went to Tennessee State University but dropped out before graduation to pursue broadcasting gigs. She's yeah. another one that was in radio first, wasn't she? Uh, Oprah? I, I think she did TV. She actually did a stint in Baltimore, believe it or not. Did one of those, uh, you know, like every city has those silly little, you take your local news anchors and then they do a 30-minute show that's not news, if exactly. you know what I mean. And she worked with this guy named Richard Scher. They used to be right? the morning show. And Good Morning Baltimore. And she was good on the air. People liked her. And then she disappeared one day. We just heard she got a gig in Chicago. <laughs> Seriously. Kabam. And then like, oh, Jesus. Meanwhile, Richard Scher looked bitter from that day forward. Sure. She goes off to be the biggest celebrity because of all he time. Was the guy, he was the main guy on the show. And gotcha. she was kind of the sidekick, and then, yeah, <laughs> you don't get a job in Chicago. You don't get a job in Chicago. <laughs> Hate to see it, man. <laughs> a library in Long Island is in hot water for giving away iconic <laughs> or, or giving away comic books to children, but not for why you'd think. Oh, uh, well, what was wrong with the comic books, Mike? <laughs> oh yeah, all about a one hour. From- <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Headlines are coming up one hour from now. In the meantime, let's get a contestant on the line for profile. This is two zero six four two one rock. All right, have we made it to drinking time? This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. GEICO asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. Start summer up by mixing things up with top paint and stain brands at Lowe's. Shop HGTV Home by Sherwin-Williams, Valspar, Cabot to find the perfect pop of color or classic shade you've been looking for. And don't forget to prep your deck for the season with reliable wood stain and sealer. Now's the perfect time to complete your paint or stain project. Lowe's. All things summer, all at the right price.